Welcome back to another RPG in a Box tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning about the textures function in the voxel editor, which was recently added in version 0.7.3. This function allows you to create new named textures for each frame of your model. So essentially, same frame, same voxels, different colors. And you can change these textures in the map editor or through scripting. So for example, you can create multiple outfits for a character. I am very excited about this tutorial because as a bonus at the end of this tutorial, we'll be doing some scripting to try out the potential of this feature in game. So let's get started. I am in RPG in a box and I've created a brand new game project with the example assets imported. And I've got the tree object loaded in the voxel editor. The textures function is located in the model tools panel where it says textures. There is a dropdown which you can use to see all of the existing textures for the current frame of your model, as well as a pencil icon, which lets you rename any created texture, a red X, which will delete a created texture, and a green plus icon, which will create a new texture. Let's create a texture for this tree for every season. So spring, summer, fall, winter. So first we'll add a new texture by clicking the green plus icon, which will open up a prompt to let us name our new texture. Let's call ours spring. Now we have a spring texture created. And if we look at the top of the voxel editor, we'll see that we're in texturing mode. This happens whenever we have a created texture selected in the textures dropdown. And in texturing mode, only the paintbrush, paint bucket, and eyedropper are able to be used. To exit texturing mode, select the default texture from the textures dropdown. Let's reselect the spring texture and then choose the paint bucket tool to replace the colors on our tree easily. Let's go with a pink cherry blossom look for the spring texture. Now let's create a summer texture. And I'm going to leave this one the same as the default texture. Now let's create a fall texture. Make it a nice red and orange. And finally, let's create a winter texture. Now, since we're only changing the texture and not the model itself, We'll say that this is an oak tree because they don't lose their leaves in the winter, they just turn brown, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we have four full seasons worth of textures, but how can we use these new textures? One simple way is in the map editor. So let's save our tree model and then go into the map editor and open up the overworld map. In order to select one of the existing trees in the map, we need to use the Edit tool located under Map Tools by either clicking it or using its hotkey 2 or F2. Then with the Edit tool active, we can double click on any tree to select it. This will open the tree in the Entity Properties panel. In it, there is a setting called Initial Texture. And if we click on the dropdown, we'll see all of our created textures. We can use this initial texture setting to change how the tree looks in game by default. You can use this setting with the texture function to create say a mossy or dirty variant of a model without having to create separate models for each variant. However, the texture function can also be used with scripting. So let's try it out. We already have our overworld map open and I'm going to pan over to the right a little bit by holding shift and holding my middle mouse button while dragging the map until this sign and this tree are easily visible. The tree isn't the right tree though. It's the small tree and we want the regular tree. So let's select it with the edit tool and then either press the delete key or right mouse click and choose delete. Now, let's go into our Objects tab on the right, find the regular tree model, click to select it, 
and then place it where the small tree was. In order to be able to reference this tree in a script, we're going to need to give it an ID. So let's make sure our edit tool is selected, double click on the tree, and in the Entity ID field, under the Entity Properties tab, we're going to input an Entity ID. I'm going to call it Season Tree. Now that our tree is placed and it has an ID, let's create a script. I want to add this script to the sign in front of the tree here. And I want to make it so that when the player clicks on the sign in game, it will ask them to pick from a list of seasons and then change the texture of the tree to the season that the player picks. Let's first save our map and then go into the script editor and create a new script. I'm going to name it season tree sign. First, we'll delete this default display message node because we don't need that. Now first, we want to display a list of choices that the player can pick from. So I'm going to go to the script tools tab. We can drag the handle here to make it larger. And up here we have a list of available logic. And under that is a list of available functions. I'm going to search the functions for display choices. And once we click on it, a little paragraph opens up down here to give a brief overview. We can click view full documentation to open up the relevant documentation in the documentation tab so we can read about the function and see if it's what we want. Display choices displays a set of choices to the player using a dialog box. The list of choices must be provided as an array of string values. But what's an array or a string? Since the terms are green, we can click on them to open up their documentation to find out. Array. An array is a scripting data type consisting of a collection or list of values. Okay, cool. So an array is a data type used in scripting that is a list, and it's formatted like this example. And it's comprised of strings. So let's go back to display choices and click on strings. Okay, string. A string is a scripting data type consisting of a string of characters enclosed by double quotes on each end. Okay, so if we look at the array example again, we'll see that each item in this list has double quotes around it, which makes them each a string. Let's continue reading about the display choices function. Once the player has selected an option, their choice will be stored into the result variable as a number, with zero being the first option, one being the second, and so forth. Okay, so the option the player picks will be stored as a number. And most importantly, the list starts with zero. Sounds perfect for what we want. So let's go back into the script editor and drag display choices onto our visual script editor. It's auto-connected to the start node, which is perfect. Now let's check this node out. First, we have a box to input our message. Let's change it to pick a season. Next is our list of choices, which if we recall in the documentation, must be provided as an array composed of string values. We can click this little wizard to open up the expression builder to help us make our array or list of choices. Each choice needs to be a string, which means that it has double quotes on each end. So let's add our texture names as options making sure that they have double quotes around them. Okay, perfect. We've got our array built. And next is speaker entity. We don't want a character asking this since it's just a sign, so we'll pick none. 
And finally, result variable or property. This is where the player's choice gets stored. I'm going to name this variable season. Make sure that you leave the dollar sign in front of the variable because variables must begin with a dollar sign. Let's take a moment to review what we've done so far. So, so far, our script will ask the player to pick a season, show a list of seasons to pick from, then store the player's choice as a number, starting at zero for spring, one for summer, two for fall, and three for winter, in this variable called season. Now, we need some way of evaluating the season variable and then deciding which texture to use depending on what the value of it is. And for that, we'll use the evaluate condition logic because we want to evaluate the condition of the season variable. First, we'll click on evaluate condition under available logic to add it to our script. And now let's click the wizard to open up the conditional expression builder. Okay, so we want to do something only when the season variable equals a certain number. For example, spring is the first option in our list, so it will be stored as zero if the player chooses it. So if the season variable equals zero, we'll want to apply the spring texture. So first, select the element to inspect, variable. Next, an operator. Okay, we want the equals operator. And finally, the value to check for is a number. If we look at the built expression up top, we'll see that it auto-completed or filled to my variable one equals one, but we want it to be our variable season. So let's change that now. And we want it to start with zero. So change the one to a zero. You can see with a little green check that this is valid. So click OK. Awesome. So now we have an expression that means if the season equals zero, which is spring, something will happen. Now we want to have it change the texture. So let's search available functions for texture. And there's only one hit, set entity texture, which says replaces the specified entity's texture with another as defined in the voxel editor. A texture name of default will revert the entity to its default texture. Perfect. Let's drag it in. It auto connected to the else, but we don't want that. We want it to happen if season equals zero. So let's change that. Perfect. Now that it's connected, let's check it out. First, we have a wizard to set the entity. So let's click on it and open up the Entity Expression Builder. Select the type of entity. We want ID, because if you remember, back when we placed the tree in the map, we gave it an ID. So let's put the ID that we gave the tree in to the Entity's Unique ID field, and then click OK. And now let's set the correct texture. Since spring is the first season in our array and the season equals zero for this to happen, we're going to want to change the texture to spring. Make sure that you spell it exactly how it's spelled in the voxel editor. Now we have it set up to change to the spring texture if the player chooses spring. But what about the other options? For that, we'll need to click add condition in the evaluate condition node to add another if statement. To make this process faster, we can copy our previous condition, open the conditional expression builder, and paste it up top. But make sure to change your number before clicking OK. The next season in our array or list is summer. So if the season equals one, we want to set the tree to the summer texture. To do that, we'll need another set entity texture node. 
We can save time by right mouse clicking on the existing one and choosing Duplicate. Make sure to change the texture to the proper one, Summer, and then connect it to the proper if statement. Next is Fall, so we'll need to repeat the process. And then one more time for winter. And we are done with our script. Let's save it. And then go back into the map editor. Now let's add the script we just created to the sign. Make sure the edit tool is selected. Double click on the sign and open the scripts section of the entity properties tab. The trigger event is already set to character interacts, which is what we want, but we want to change the existing script to the one that we created, which is season tree sign. So click on the drop down to open it up. Pick the script you wrote. Perfect. Now let's save our map and try it in game. We can easily try it out in game by clicking quick play on the main toolbar. Select new game. And let's click on our sign to see if it works. Awesome, it asks which season we want. Let's do spring. Perfect. It works. You just wrote a script that changes the texture of the tree in game. How cool is that? I hope you had fun learning about the textures function and doing some scripting with me. If you'd like to see more of these tutorials, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like doing a little bit of scripting as a bonus, let me know and it's something I'll try to continue doing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye!